Okay, I had to swap camera because it's a fucking, I don't know, I, I don't know, that one keeps going dead with the batteries. Um, okay, as you can see, I've put the blobs, the silicone in the corners, I ran a bead, and I put the end seals in, and like the timing cover, I dad them around the ports and smeared out with my finger. Right. So now, before you put the gaskets in, you want to put another blob here in your corner. All your corners get a blob before and after your end seal. <clears throat> now I'm going to run a fucking small bead across the end seal. Then I'll put the gaskets in place and set the intake down. Okay, now I'm ready to put the intake in place. I've got the gaskets in place. I've got it sealed both sides. Um, like I said before, I use the silicone as a precaution. I don't want leaks, whether it's vacuum, water, oil. Um, and I know putting this on, it's not going to fucking leak. Okay. As you can see, it's not been port matched. I could have opened the ports up a little bit. But, the ports on the intake, which is real important for a street motor, are smaller than the port in the head. And what that, ha what that helps to do is doing overlap when you're trying to get revert, your motor is trying to reverse its flow. If you leave your intake smaller than your fucking port, it's going to come out, hit, try to go through that small hole and it's going to hit a fucking wall and try to stop reversion. Um, a race motor, I would port match this and the intake, but for the streets, I always leave the intake smaller than the, in the intake port. Um, the exhaust is just the opposite. You want your header bigger than your exhaust port size. Um, the intake, it's basically an RPM air gap knockoff from Procomp, except for it's fucking cost a lot less. Um, it's a nice piece, and as you can see, you put a carburetor base on it. It fits. All the holes line up. The intake doesn't overhang in the fucking throttle bores. So I don't have to spend all day in here porting. For an Adderbrock, you usually gotta fucking cut away at the top here. And then blend in the roof. This has a nice transition. And as you can see, it has ridges in the floor to help atomization. Um, a few people out there that run the Edelbrock fucking um, performer intakes, you're a moron. Take them off, throw them away. You're better off with a stock fucking 305 high output intake. You see the floors have ridges where the performer is a smooth floor. What happens when your air and fuel comes in and hits that floor, it tends to separate. It doesn't stay atomized. And the more atomization you have, the more power you're going to make, the better fuel economy you're going to get, and so on and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm going to put this on. I can do this one-handed. Now, ideally, you just want to come straight down with it. The gaskets didn't move. Now, what I want to do here is put the disturber in for my alignment on my intake. Um, some of you have done this a few times and probably noticed it when you try to put it, take a disturber out or put one in. You got to fight with it sometimes and wiggle it back and forth and to get it up or get it in. 
And that's probably because someone didn't line their intake up. So what I do is before I bolt it down is I'll put the distributor in, you know, and wiggle it, find find the neutral spot so the distributor slides in and out. Then tighten the the intake down. Okay, I've got the intake on. I haven't tightened it down. The distributor's in. And as you can see, it comes out with no problem. It goes in with no problem. So the intake's right where I want it. Now when you tighten your intake down, just like doing your heads, you're going to work from your center out in a crisscross pattern. Don't tighten this side from the center out, then go to this side. Tighten these two about the same, then go in on this side, and tighten these two about the same. Then go to these two, or these two, then go back to you know go back and do your ends. Um, I'm using Allen bolts. They look good. Um, they came with the parts. For all you guys are gonna go to the hardware store and buy stuff. You can't see it. But you see that the tip of that bolt's poking through right there. You just gotta be careful not to get bolts that are too long. Because on some of them, they can run through your, your head and rub on your push rod, and you don't want that. So, I'm going to tighten this down. Then we're going to flip it over and put the oil pan and stuff on it. As you can see, I've been, I haven't done the oil pan yet or the oil pump. Always do the pan last. Because I learned the hard way from some moron. Actually, he wasn't a moron. He was just kind of fucking clutchy. He could actually do pretty good on a motor. Um, he come and got oil pan gaskets off me like three times in one day because once he'd done his bottom end, he'd put the oil pan on it. He'd come up and start doing his top end. He'd drop a washer or whatnot, and it would go all the way to the oil pan. Well, of course, you got to take the pan off to get the fucking thing out. And you ruin your gaskets. So from him coming up and getting gaskets off me that day, that taught me right there not to put the oil pan on until the last fucking thing. So anyway, I'm going to torque this down. Actually, to be honest, I don't torque it. I tighten it by hand. Um, I'm going to say probably around 40 pounds is what I do. I'm not sure.